and um, we're just going to jump right into the CFM6 Document Manager application. Now, what is CFM6 Document Manager? Uh, Document Imaging Matter uh, Manager is I guess you can look at it as a digital filing cabinet. It's a way for you to get your hard copies into your server system so you can reference them quickly, send them over to your customers, automatically transfer them through EDI or to our Crown Connect, um, have them available for your invoicing, and just a way that you can collate and have all those images in a di digital format so you don't have to go rifling through a filing cabinet to pull them out and associate them later on. So the first thing that you're going to need if you have Document Manager is a compatible scanner. So this document here, which is available for anyone, we can get this out to you. If you don't have it already, please reach out to your sales or support group and we can send this to you. This is our document which is going to explain the compatible hardware for the document manager application. Here are the models right here that we work the best with. The Fujitsu 6130 and 7160 series. Those are business class scanners. They're really fast and they're just work flawlessly with our application here. Um, they're going to run you ballpark $800 or so. Uh, like I said, they're business class devices. They last a very long time. We also work with some of the consumer class devices. So this brother multifunction machine, 7440, uh, about $100. You can get them at any Best Buy or Office Depot. These work as well with our system. They won't be as fast, but you can utilize those. Really the trick with compatible hardware is a direct Twain driver. So you need to be able to have this scanner talk directly to your computer. All right, so you want this uh, scanner to talk directly to the computer. We run into issues when you have a uh, virtual Twain. So some of these Xerox, Canon, Sharp multifunction machines, they don't have direct Twain and they virtualize the files, put them into a folder, and then try to pull them out later. We can run into problems with that. We can work with it, but your best results are going to be to go with your compatible um, hardware here. Now, if you have a scanner that you want to see is going to work, you know, just give us a call. We can set up the document manager app and test it out for you. So once you have your scanner, you have to go and then and get the drivers. What I did here was just took a screenshot of the software downloads for the Fujitsu 7160 and 7260. Again, just Twain drivers. You have to download these on each computer that's going to be utilizing that scanner. Um, it's a download, a next, 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 continue to get through it, and then you're going to have the drivers installed. Here's a screenshot here of our scanner drivers on this computer, and we have that brother multi-function machine hooked up in the other room, and you'd be able to see it under your imaging device. So as long as it's there and long as, as long as it has a working driver, um, you should be able to scan with that device here. Now, once you have your scanner set up, and we'll jump into the process flow of how to scan in the documents a, a little bit later here, um, yep, I, we want you to understand that there are two types of connections. Here's the application settings for your document manager program, and I'll show you how to get to these from within the application. But this just illustrates that you have two ways that the scanning computer can talk to the server. Uh, most commonly here, you're going to see a local connection. So your scanning PC is within the same building as the server, and you're just talking to it and sending the files back and forth. Alternately, you can use a remote connection. So your scanner can be located in another building, or maybe you have a hosted server. Some of your Transoft customers are like that. Um, and you'll send the images over the internet to the public IP address of that server. You don't really have to know the details about this. Moreover, that if you're having trouble with images, so if you can't commit images, what you can do is go to the application settings, and whichever one is checked here, whether it's a local or a remote connection, just hit that test button, and that's going to tell you if you're experiencing a networking issue. Uh, we'll get into this in a second here. I'll show you how this looks within the actual application itself. So. To scan in images, you're going to need to have those images associated with barcodes. And there are a couple different ways that you can associate your, your hard copy paperwork with barcodes. The first is going to be a cover sheet. Pull this up, and zoom this out a little bit for you. So within the Crown 6 application, the CFM 6 application, you'd select the shipment, and I'll show you how to do this, and print out a barcode cover sheet. 
you're going to tell the system, I have an alert and a DR for this shipment. It's going to print out a cover sheet and say that the next two pieces of paper behind this cover sheet are in that order, alert and then the DR. So then when you feed all these items into the scanner, it's going to read the barcode and then say, assign this next image as an alert, and then the one after that as a DR to this shipment. It's the most common way to do our document imaging application. Now the advantage to this is that you can just get these barcode cover sheets and your paperwork all stacked up and collated and stick them in one of those 7160 scanners, 50 at a time, hit a button and walk away. And it's going to scan everything in and associate it. You can go in and manually assign shipments. You can import them in electronically. You can do it differently. But if you're using these barcode sheets, the labor intensive part is going to be to print them out and to get the paperwork behind them. Then you just put them at the scanner and, and everything's going to be electronically filed for you. The other way that you can use barcodes is with labels. So here's an example here. And we printed out a barcode label and stuck it onto this piece of paper. So the advantage to using barcode labels are that you don't really have to collate or keep anything in a particular order after you pop those labels on. You can just print out your labels as you have your paperwork. You can send that paperwork out with a driver um, if he comes back in with it signed, you can scan it in. You can scan it before you send him out, and if he loses it, then you still have a copy of it. You can scan it in as many times as you want, and it's always going to overwrite this file because it has that barcode on it. So in any order, as soon as you get the, the barcode label on the document, it's really easy just to pop those things through the scanner over and over again. It's essentially a barcode cover sheet per document right here. The downside to using labels are that you're going to have to get one little sticky label for every piece of paper that you're going to scan in. So it's a little bit more labor intensive up front because as you're handling that paperwork, you've got to put on all of those labels. Once you're done with that, they're in the system and it's, it's actually very easy. The third way that you can use labels, and this is one that not a lot of customers know about, but we can help you set this up, is to assign them directly to the documents within the Crown Freight Manager application. So here I have an air bill for our test database, the Crown Freight Demo customer, and I have a barcode on it. What we can do is we can have uh, certain shipment documents, your air bill, your job sheet, your DR, and we can say that um, when you print those items out of the Crown 6 system, to automatically put a barcode on them and assign them to slot 1, 2, or 3. So we build it into the database. Uh, you just let us know where you want to assign them to. And then as you're printing your documents out of the Crown uh, 6 system, they already have these labels on here. Now, these labels can work in conjunction with cover sheets. They can work in conjunction with sticky labels. Um, but this is really something that we'd like you guys to take advantage of. Give us a call. We can show you how to do it because it makes it so you don't even need to use a cover sheet or an additional label. It's just going to be on all of your documents there. All right. So once we know how you're using, once you know how you're using the barcodes, uh, one other thing that we want to cover before we go through the process flow is how they work in the Crown 6 system. So here I have the Crown Freight Manager application. And if I go to my file, system setup, and then company setup, I have this imaging tab here. Now this tab is going to let me label all of my document slots. You'll hear our support reps talk about document slots quite a bit. Well, what document slot did you scan into? What slot do you have? Um, the Crown 6 system cares really about the slot number. It doesn't really reference the name. The name is more of a, a friendly name that you have for users so they can pick the right slot. But really, Crown looks to this slot for uh, a lot of things. So you can label these whatever you want. We just have Alert, House Bell, Master, and DR here. Um, but you can label them however you'd like. And over here, you have the option for cover sheets or document labels when you're printing out. If you go to your advanced, advanced imaging setup here, this is a relatively new portion, um, and we're continuing to add to it. But here's where you can select if certain slots are going to be multi-page. So if you want your alert slot to be multi-page, you can print out those cover sheets and then say how many documents you're going to attach behind that alert slot. So that, again, is under the file system setup company setup under advanced imaging options, 
and you would just choose multi-page on your multi-page document. Uh, one relatively new feature we have is the requirement. So you can now set these documents to be required before shipments move um, off of the dispatch screen or more commonly used into the billing system. So all of you are familiar with the review system and how the shipment lines will turn pink when they're ready to go to billing. You can say that the um, shipment isn't going to be ready to be put onto an invoice until you have a scan there. So that can be set up per document slot on that section here. You can also, I don't want to go too far down that road, but you can also use completion requirements for customers to have that rule apply to only set customers. All right, let's take a look really quick at the customer file. This is one thing that we run into quite a bit with um, Forward Air and uh, these other forwarders who um, get uh, hard copy scans from us. So if we take a look at the com imaging here, on a customer, and in this case, I just have the uh, the Crown Connect on it, and I go into the CFM web imaging. You'll see that I have parameter four. Uh, I'm sorry, parameter one set is the number four. So when you have a forwarder with a direct EDI connection, um, we're going to need the document slot set in parameter one to which they want to receive those images. So if you have Ford Air and you want them to always get the DR, for example, then in their company setup here, in this setup, you want their imaging module to say, send the document slot number four. Now we can configure that for you, but moreover, you want to train your users on when you're scanning in delivery receipts for Ford Air, make sure that you put them in to slot number four, otherwise they're not going to send through EDI. So that's an important thing where if, if you scan it into an ultrasonic slot, it's not going to go. Now, one last thing before we get into the process flow here, and I want to touch on is the scan cabinet. If you go to File, System Setup, and then Imaging Setup, this is going to tell you the server-based location where your scan cabinets are stored. The way that the Crown application does this, and I think I have a scan cabinet over here, is you define where the images are going to be stored on a share on your network, and then as you scan in the images, they go into these folders. Every time the folder reaches 10,000 items, it automatically creates a new folder and scans into that directory. What you want to do, and again, we can consult you on this, have your IT guys talk to us, is if you go to File, System Setup, and then Imaging Setup, you want to make sure that you're backing up these directories. These are all of your images that are saved on your system. They're not saved in the database. You want to make sure that these be, are being backed up on a regular basis. Um, and they're going to point to that server location here. All right, so let's take a look at the process flow. To get a barcode uh, or a cover sheet printed out for a shipment, what you're going to do is select the job, and then you can click on this printer icon here, or I'm sorry, the scanner icon here. And that's going to allow you to print out a cover sheet or labels for the selected slot. If it says on file, it means it's already scanned on file. If it says pending, that means that you've already printed out a cover sheet, you just haven't scanned in anything for it yet. So you select whatever you have here, hit the print button, and it's gonna dump out a cover sheet, or if I hit label, it'll dump out a label. There's also an import button here. I'll show you that in, the, uh, in just a minute. All right. Once you have all of your cover sheets printed out and you have all your paperwork collated, um, then what you're going to do is go back to your scanning system here and scan everything in. But before we do that, let me show you the alternate ways that you can print out these cover sheets. You can do it right from your dispatch grid, anywhere you see this icon, essentially. You can do it from within the job if you click on the scanner icon here. You can do it from search, and you can also even do it from the billing system. So if we go to billing here, I um, might be going through and making sure that my paperwork is on file. Anywhere you see this scanner button, you can print out your cover sheets or your labels. If you're going to print out a crown document with a barcode already associated to it, 
then you select the job and let's just say job sheet in this case and then there's the crown document with my barcode already on it once you have those items you're going to go to your document manager application now it's important to know that you can have this document manager application installed on all of the PCs in your office. The ones which are talking directly to the scanner need those twain drivers that we discussed. But if you just want to have this application installed on the other PCs, you can use it to drag over and import files. So if you have paperwork from emails or, or whatever you have, you can just drag that directly into your document manager application here and use that program for importing in images. So I've already done it, but what you would do is open up your document manager application, and then if you have items in your scanner, you would hit this scanner icon here, this begin batch scanning. That's going to pull in your barcode sheets or your documents with labels, and it's going to read them and assign them right here. So it's going to tell you the type, the file location, whatever other information it has. Real quick, let me show you this setup uh, function. This is what we had mentioned earlier. Or if I go to set up an application setting, that's where you can view your application settings. You can also test out your connection. If you go to set up and then imaging device settings, this is where you can see the connection to the scanner. So if you're having trouble scanning and you open this up and this is blank, that means that you don't have the scanner driver associated with it. Once I have my images scanned in here, I can do a, a few different things with them before I commit. Commit is going to be to write them to those folders and then link them up in the database. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can say change shipment assignment. So I can go in, I can change this scan and assign it to a different house bill. So I'm going to go into Crown here. I'm going to pull up another job. Copy the house bill. And I can click on that. And I can say change shipment assignment. And I can assign it to a different job. So if you print out the sheet and you scan it in incorrectly or put some paperwork in the system that wasn't behind a cover sheet, it will show up in here and then you can assign it manually. Now, some customers will use this almost exclusively as their process where they'll just stick paperwork in a scanner and then go and manually assign each. It works. It may not be the most efficient way. We recommend the uh, cover sheets and labels. But I can go in, take this image, sign my house bill, sign the document type, and then do it. And then it's going to change it. So once you commit in the database, it's going to find the correct shipment or the new shipment there and assign it accordingly. Just like change shipment assignment, you can say change shipment type. So if this is not supposed to be a house bill, it's supposed to be something else, I can say change image type, and then just change it to say alert. You can also drag images directly in here. So let me go to my images folder here. And I can click on this image and I can drag it directly to the system. Once it's in there, it's going to highlight in this uh, um, blue color for me. And it will allow me to take it, search for a shipment. I'm just going to pop in that same house bill that we had. And then I'm going to assign it as, let's say, supporting doc 6. What that will do is that will then go and reference the database, bring back the information about the shipment, and then assign it for me. Once I hit save, I've now assigned that I'm ready to pull that into the system. So you can drag those images directly in, you can scan them in from the scanner, you can change the shipment assignments, and you can change the document type assignments, whatever you need to do before you commit. Now you also have the error log, so if you go to commit, or if you have anything that scans in and it can't be read, you're going to see that in the error log. If you have remote imaging and you go to commit and it can't connect to your, um, your hosted server, it's going to tell you that in the error log as well. So for right now, what I'm going to do is just say commit images. It's going to take all those jobs, it's going to transfer them over to my saved imaging cabinets over on my server, and it's going to link them up in Crown. All right. Now within Crown, I can go and I can click on my shipment, and let's say that the customer calls in, they want a copy of that POD, or they want some, some information. I can either find it in my dispatch grid here. Most commonly, we're going to see people use search because it's going to have 100 items on their dispatch grid. So you can search for it, and then wherever you see this scanner icon, you can view or manage the images on file. So click on this. It's going to tell me what's on file. 
click Manage Images on File, and then you'll see these jobs in here, or you'll see these uh, hard copies in here. Again, within this, you can right-click, and you can change the shipment assignment. You can set it as something else. In addition, you can also drag and drop directly into that screen. So you don't even need the Document Manager app on there. Anyone who has Crown, and this is key, actually has a local Crown application installed on their PC, can just go right to Images here, click on it, and then drag it over. And it's going to copy it over and say, what do you want this to be? And I'm going to say, that's my house bill. Hopefully I don't have one of those on file. Nope. And then hit Import. And you'll see the difference in here. Imported is going to be obviously that you dragged it in. But you can manage all those images on file. You can print them out right from that screen. Let's say that a customer calls up and they want a copy of the paperwork. You can open up the job, or you can do it right from the dispatch grid. And if you do your down arrow next to the printer, choose your POD report, it's going to show you what images are on file. So you can do a cover sheet if you want, and you can say put the air bell as my cover sheet or whatever you want to do. Or you can just hit Run Report, and it's going to dump out all of your images that are scanned to the system. And of course, we've been using the same file over and over. Um, once you have that information here, you can email it directly to them. It's going to shoot it out as a PDF. You can print it. You can put it to a, a PDF yourself. And you can get that information over to your customer. All right. So from an operational perspective, that's how, how you're going to find those images and get them out to your customers here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, billing and requiring those images for billing here. One thing that we have in the review screen is a SC and on file checkbox. We recommend using these. So we can show you how to add these to your review screen if you don't already have them there. But essentially what you can do is you can open up review and I say group on my group bar here, I can group by this item and I can see what has been scheduled and then what needs to be scanned in. So I can make sure that from this process before I push stuff over to the billing system that I'm printing out my cover sheets and scanning in or importing in all my documents. So FC and on file is used in here. Once you have all your shipments scanned in, or I'm sorry, all your images scanned in, you move them over to the billing system. Again, you can use the requirements to actually require that before it turns purple and goes over. Take a look at the billing system. We also have that SC and on file. So <clears throat> SC means scheduled. I printed out a cover sheet. I'm expecting an image for it. On file obviously means it's on file. Um, associated reports here. We go to our management gallery. We do have some images on file reports uh, in our maintenance as well here. Okay. We have images not yet scanned, images on file, jobs needing cover sheets. This is going to tell you what you have pending out there that you have to push through those scanners. So when printing out your batch invoices, I'm sure you guys have seen this little check mark that says print up backup paperwork. What that is used for is that is going to take uh, image slots which you define in the customer file and have those dump out with your invoices. It's going to collate behind them. So if I take a look at my customer file, so file and then customers here, and I go to the com slash imaging, which is communications and imaging, I have for this customer that when I choose the option to print backup paperwork to dump out these two. So you can have other images scanned in different slots, and they don't necessarily have to dump out when you choose that option. You just define them here. Now, if you want to make a bulk update and set these settings for all of your customers, you don't have to go through each individual one. You can use this little gear icon here, looks like a green flower, and that will allow you to assign um, these, uh, these options to all of your customers. So when you go and choose print backup paperwork with your batch printing, it will dump these out for you. All right. Oh, one more thing I want to show you real quick is Crown Connect. So I can't show you what the direct EDI is going to look like. If you send those images directly to Forward Air, we, can't have, we don't have access into their system. But if you have your customer set up to send the shipments through EDI to Crown Connect, this is what you're going to see. So when your customer logs into the Crown Connect at, uh, website and they see the little picture of the camera, that means that there's a scanned image on file for that shipment. 
So as long as you have the system set up to transmit images to Crown Connect, they're going to be able to see that hard copy on the website. Now, it's important to note that transferring images through EDI does not use any EDI units. It's built into your license. So you do have to have the shipments go up to Crown Connect. That utilizes EDI, but there's no additional cost to have the images go up behind it. If you guys do have any questions, our phone number, 716-651-0977. I'm sure you're very familiar with it. You can talk to our uh, tech services reps. We can get you out a copy of this um, webinar. We're going to post that up on our YouTube channel, and we can uh, send you a mass email with that information on it. And um, thank you for joining us.